we just have to discuss the Miss South Africa versus Miss Africa South era at Miss World. Oh my goodness, this is the craziest thing I think that Eric Morley has ever conceptualized in his life in order to try and keep South Africa in the running at Miss World. This wasn't just a one-off thing, a three-year thing. It was a whole, a whole, guys. Seven years. Seven years is a long time to keep a crazy thing like this going. And this was such a blatant accommodation of the... South African apartheid regime, it is insane. In the last video, we discussed the fact that in 1969, things were looking up for South Africa at Miss World when Linda Colette managed a top seven placement. But in 1970, things were a bit difficult because the Miss World organization was pressured by the wider media to take a stance against South Africa and the apartheid regime. Um, obviously, as you guys know, only white women were allowed to compete at Miss South Africa. and This was unfair to begin with. Furthermore, around the world, there were boycotts against South Africa. And so Eric Morley had to make a decision, you know. And so Gillian Jessup was Miss South Africa of 1970. But Eric Morley told the South African organization to also send a non-white contestant who would, from then on, be known as Miss Africa South. I know, how insane is that? And there were so many publicity shots of Pearl, the girl eventually chosen as the non-white Miss South Africa, or Miss Africa South, rather, um, with Gillian, and they were making it seem like these two were sort of besties and like everything was all sunshine and rainbows. And Pearl actually later came out and said that she was allegedly warned not to speak on the apartheid issue while she was overseas. Now, what ended up happening, really interestingly, Gillian Jessup, who was the Miss South Africa, placed as the fourth runner-up, but Pearl Janssen, who was Miss Africa South, was eventually crowned as the first runner-up at Miss World 1970. The eventual winner of Miss World 1970 was Granada's Jennifer Hostin, and this was actually Granada's debut year. Sweden's Marjorie Crystal Johnson was a huge fan favorite to win, and there were so many people, you know, angry about the fact that uh, Sweden didn't win and she only placed as a runner up. And the Prime Minister of Granada, Sir Eric Gehry, was actually on the judging panel, so a lot of people had a problem with that as well. Eric Morley actually had to go and reveal the judges scores to explain the complex judging system at Miss World and due to so much hate and pressure and people who were you know making a fuss about the fact that Sweden didn't win um, Julia Morley who was organizing director back then actually temporarily resigned due to all of the backlash I mean, oh my goodness, to make things even worse, you know, Jennifer Hostin was the first woman of African descent to win Miss World. And there's a whole dramatized film about this edition of Miss World called Misbehavior starring Keira Knightley released in 2020. It's pretty good. But yes, I can't, I can't imagine Julia Morley having to temporarily resign due to pressure in a time where social media wasn't even a thing. That's so crazy. But that is something that happened in 1970. In 1971, um, they kept this clown business going and Monica Farrell was the crowned Miss South Africa. She eventually got into the top 15 at Miss World 1971. Fun fact about Monica, she was also Miss Hibiscus Queen 1968. In those days, Miss Hibiscus Queen actually sent South African women to Miss Universe. And so Monica Farrell also competed at Miss Universe 1968, but she went unplaced. A lot of people think this is because of her very sexy and controversial preliminary gown. Um, anyway, the non-white participants for South Africa at Miss World 1971 was Gailey Ryan. Unfortunately, Gailey went unplaced, but she was Miss Africa South of that year. 1972, Stephanie Reinecke was Miss South Africa and she placed in the top 15 at Miss World. And Cynthia Shange was Miss Africa South and she unfortunately went unplaced. 
1973, Shelley Latham was Miss South Africa and she eventually was placed as the fourth runner up at Miss World 1973. Alan Peters, oh my goodness, just just take a moment to gaze and just appreciate this beautiful, timeless beauty that this woman has. She was Miss Africa South and she also got a placement for herself in the top 15 at Miss World 1973. Miss World 1974 was another doozy because our girl Miss South Africa, Annalene Creel, was actually firstly the first runner-up at Miss World 1974, but eventually she assumed the title of 1974 because Helen Morgan had to resign because she had a child, a secret child that she didn't tell anyone about. Helen Morgan actually also was the first runner-up at Miss Universe 1974. So this woman was just like, you know what, if the rules, there's no reason why mothers shouldn't be competing. So Annalene Creel by that um, actually became South Africa's second Miss World. In the same year, in 1974, Evelyn Williams was Miss Africa South and she also got a placement in the top 15. In 1975, Roda Rademeyer was Miss South Africa and she placed in the top 15. Uh, Helga Vera Johns was actually supposed to represent South Africa. You know, she was crowned Miss South Africa 1975, but she was denied entry to Miss World. Um, and the thing is about Helga, she was actually supposed to be representing Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, at Miss World 1972, but was not allowed, you know, despite the fact that she's a British citizen, because of the fact that Rhodesia had a sticky political situation back then. And I mean, the irony, the irony, the fact that they could do this whole song and dance with Miss South Africa and Miss Africa South for South Africa and their political situation, but they couldn't accommodate whatever was going on in Rhodesia. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, Helga then moved to South Africa where she was crowned Miss South Africa 1975, but she was denied entry to Miss World yet again, uh, apparently due to the fact that she wasn't a resident of South Africa for at least five years, and those were the rules of Miss World, but it was probably still because she was from Rhodesia. So anyway, her first runner-up was not Rhoda Rodemeyer, who eventually went to Miss World. Her first runner-up was actually Crystal Cooper. You know, she was the first runner-up at Miss South Africa 1975. But Crystal's father told her not to go to Miss World unless Helga was stripped of her Miss South Africa title and Crystal got the Miss South Africa title. Um, this obviously didn't happen. So eventually the second runner-up, Rueda Rodemeyer, was actually sent to Miss World 1975, where she did get into the top 15. The non-white counterpart, Miss Africa South, was Lydia Johnston, and she unfortunately went unplaced at Miss World 1975. By 1976, a lot of countries grew, you know, a bit <laughs> unamused with the arrangement with Miss South Africa and Miss Africa South and all of that, and people were getting a bit annoyed, you know. Fairly so, because South Africa has now an advantage, you know, they were sending two women, you know, which is a bit unfair. But South Africa still did compete in 1976, and Lynn Massein was Miss South Africa, she went unplaced. Veronica Mutsepe was Miss Africa South, and she went unplaced as well. One thing that did happen at Miss World 1976, eight countries actually quit Miss World 1976 in boycott of the unfairness of South Africa's two competitive system. And, you know, apartheid in general, Mauritius, Swaziland, which is now Eswatini, Malaysia, Seychelles, Sri Lanka, Liberia, the Philippines and India uh, were amongst those who quit the contest that year. And in a scathing article, some people talked about the girls who chose to stay at the competition, you know, the countries who didn't boycott South Africa's apartheid system, writing, those who fly thousands of miles away in search of fame and fortune, 5,000 for the winner, and contracts worth 15,000 to sell anything from soap to perfume, are willing to turn a blind eye to the implications as to why the black beauty from South Africa could not call herself 
Miss South Africa, while the pretty white 18 year old could. This was a matter of politics. Politics based on the color of the skin. Racialism by any other name. So in 1977, the Miss South Africa organization pivots and for the first time in 21 years, they actually start to allow all races to compete at Miss South Africa. The Miss Africa South title was renamed Miss Black South Africa, but they no longer sent women to any international competition because now Miss South Africa basically allows everyone. Vanessa Vandenberg was Miss South Africa 1977. I mean, she was white, you know, despite South Africa allowing all races now, she was white and she went unplaced. The next 14, yes, one, four Miss South Africas were actually all white until Amy Klein Hans and subsequently Jeff, Jackie Moffa King were crowned in 1992 and 1993 respectively after the abolition of apartheid. So South Africa was actually banned from this world after 1977 and they were only allowed back in 1991. The Miss Africa South and Miss South Africa thing is just the weirdest thing you've ever heard. Just imagine. <laughs> just imagine it happening today that would be so freaking insane and crazy. I, I cannot even conceptualize something like that happening today. Oh my goodness. Guys, let me know what you guys think about this whole debacle. In the next video, we will be talking about, you know, obviously after South Africa was banned, they came back and this was the golden era for South Africa at Miss World coming up. So very exciting. Let me know what you guys think about the Miss Africa South, Miss South Africa thing. So crazy. And also the countries that chose to boycott South Africa. Very brave, especially India. India wasn't that big at Miss World then, but definitely looking at the amount of power India has garnered at Miss World. I definitely have huge respect for women who are willing to stand up for their political beliefs. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!